Okay, we're going to do that where we're all going to collectively put our okay, goggles and glasses on. My forehead. So that's where, that's, the, safety guys that's where the knowledge goes in. Exactly. <laughs> so, no, yeah. safety first. Yeah. All right, folks, uh, welcome to our unit on genetics. Um, and we're not going super deep into genetics, but we want to give you a good overview of the process. And our first video with that is we want to just preload some of the vocab for you. Um, so that when we run across them as we're talking about other things throughout the unit and working on stuff, you'll know what we're talking about. Before we get started, though, we have to issue a warning. There, There is lots of knowledge coming your way very quickly, um, and we always want to follow safety procedures. So we're going to be wearing safety glasses in case any of this knowledge splatters or, or uh, um, becomes volatile. Um, that way we are protected uh, as we learn. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, and the first one to talk about, we've already talked about this in the previous unit, but gene. And we're talking about genes on DNA, not the genes on your lower half of your body. Um, and simply all a gene is, is a piece of DNA that codes for a specific trait. Um, traits are things like height or eye color or the ability to digest uh, lactose in milk um, or um, being able to make certain antibodies to diseases and things. Um, and generally that is a protein. Um, codes for one protein that then controls things like, or influences things like your height or your eye color. <laughs> You'll notice we, we're, we're going to be very cautious uh, at points in how we use terms. And, um, and, and we'll, we'll state this more as we go through um, specific types of inheritance. But genetics is, is awesome, but it's, it's also super complex. And we are definitely presenting a, an oversimplified version of it for you. So when you go on and become a geneticist or you study uh, genetics in more detail, you'll be like, wait a minute, my, my high school teachers, they, they lied to me. You know, we know that, that it's more complicated than it is. We're, we're just trying to make it accessible. We're not, we're not lying. We're just leaving out some of the extra details. To Everything build on later. It's correct, we, but yeah. there's more. Yeah. It just sounds like lying. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, so allele. This is very closely related to gene and um, uh, a subtle difference, but a very important difference. A, a single gene, let's just go with the gene for, um, we, I guess we've got tall and short here. Let's pretend, and again, this isn't true because there are multiple genes that influence height, but let's say there's a gene for height and there are two different versions of it. There's a tall version and a short version. We call the different versions of the same gene an allele. Um, so same thing for, for eye color or hair color, or as Mr. Homley said, physiological traits like um, how, how fast your muscles recover after they're being used, or can you digest certain foods, um, hormone production, or, or the direction of tissue growth, things like that. All of those can potentially have multiple versions of a single gene. So we call the different versions of the same gene an allele. Yeah. So Remember, the genes often code for a protein that causes something to happen. So the different versions of the gene, the different alleles, are um, still a gene that makes that protein, but makes the protein just a little bit different, so it has a slightly altered function. Yeah, and, and if you remember on transcription translation, um, so the DNA, A's, T's, G's, and C's, the order is a little bit different, which leads to a little bit different order of amino acids on the protein. And then the, the, the protein folds slightly differently. A slightly different shape means a slightly different function. So that's why Kemet is so short and I'm so tall. Wow. Because yeah, there's no it's, it's the one gene, right? It's just that one oh, thing. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, so I believe we covered chromosomes a little bit also in that transcription video as we were kind of giving you some uh, background information on DNA. So remember that chromosomes are essentially a wonderful way to store all of your DNA, right? You've got tons and tons of DNA. If we just kind of let it sit there, uh, it would be taking up lots of space. It could be uh, potentially damaged, things like that. Um, so whenever uh, we're talking about genetics, things like that, we have our DNA nicely packed um, into these things called chromosomes. 
And we happen to have 23 pairs, um, which isn't an indicator of like the, the complexness or simpleness of the organism. Uh, plenty of like things like potatoes, bananas, things like that have way more chromosomes than we do. Um, so just knowing you know, the number of pairs doesn't really tell you a whole lot about the organism necessarily. Um, but you should know that us humans uh, have 23 pairs and we have the same genes on each pair. So we got those two. They might have different variations potentially, but they're all um, contain all of that genetic information uh, to make you, you, right? So if you have two chromosomes of number one, both with the gene for height and skin color, again, uh, we said that there's some variations, you'll still have that gene, but it could potentially uh, be the gene for being short or the gene for being tall, again, in our kind of generalized example. Um, so we have those different alleles. That's what's going to be potentially different between the chromosomes, but we'll always have all of the genes on our chromosomes. Nothing right. to add that time? Uh, I was made fun of before this got started <laughs> that I talk too much. Okay. <laughs> so speaking of the genes and the different types of genes, so since we have two chromosomes, uh, or, or pairs of chromosomes, like Ms. Ripley was talking about. Um, we also have two alleles for every gene, right? There's the allele that's on that chromosome number one and the allele that's on the other chromosome number one. And just for reference, this one came from your mom and this one came from your dad. And now you got those two chromosome number ones and they both have, let's say, the gene for, um, let's call it E ears. Um, big E would be the allele that would code for making big ears. Um, and little e'd be the code for making little ears. Okay, but it still codes for making ears. Let's simplify it, right? Um, so your genotype is the, uh, all of the, um, both of the alleles that give you that trait. So um, we'll, we designate the alleles, we usually use letters like big E will represent the big ears, little E will represent the little ears. Uh, you put them together, big E, big E, that is, your genotype, or you could be a genotype with a big E and a little e. Those two alleles for that gene, the E gene, um, that would be your genotype, or you could have two little E alleles. That is your genotype. I think that's the name of a rapper, right? Biggie, Biggie? I think so. I, I think you took it from genetics class at some point. Yeah. 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 As all great rappers are influenced by. Right? Oh, yeah. Um, if you study it, um, the, there's a huge biology underculture in, um, I'd say, rap, pop, um, most music genres, yeah. Um, but anyway, if genotype is the combination of alleles that you specifically have encoded in your DNA, the phenotype is the result of, of those alleles interacting with each other and the other genes inside of your body, as well as the environment, um, to produce what we would call like the physical um, appearance or or manifestation of the trait. And, and typically we say physical traits and, you know, phenotype, if you can take that uh, F sound, the F, and, and think physical appearance, that will help you tie it together. But it's not just how you look, you know, how tall, how big are your ears, what color is your hair, your eyes, um, physical traits like that, but also, again, the physiological um processes that are going on inside of your body. Um, how wet is the earwax that you produce or um, oh. how strongly can your muscles contract? Um, you know what? I, I think you'd have to quote me. I, I have to go back and uh, I read this book about um, human genes and what we know about them so far. And uh, earwax uh, type is one of the few almost purely dominant recessive uh, traits that, that we have. But most of them are are a little bit more complicated than that. But anyway, uh, as well as, you know, can you digest dairy? Can you, uh, whatever else. So it's it's how you look, but also how your body functions is, is part of that as well. Um, so we call that the phenotype. So uh, our next term is now thinking about genotype again. So again, genotype is telling us what uh, genes do you have? What alleles do you have? Um, do you have the tall allele? Do you have the short allele? Um, and we kind of like to add some more terms so that we can more accurately uh, talk about kind of which ones you have. So this first one is um, homozygous. If you remember back in Science 9 Days, uh, we learned about homogenous substances, and we said that they were the same all throughout the entire substance, right? 
So same thing here, um, homo still means the same. So this is gonna refer to genotypes um, where there's only kind of one variation of the gene. So let's say you have two big E's or you have two small E's, right? So it's not going to include something down at the bottom there that has a big E and a little E, right? Those aren't exactly the same letters. Um, so we only say they're homogenous if we have both the exact same letter, the exact same capitalization, all of the alleles are the same. I heard it too. Yeah. What did you hear? Um, she went science what? nine on us again. Yeah. I got a pan to my audience. Well, I said homo homogenous, zygous. didn't I? Instead of homo. <laughs> Those are how the be, words are said. We're gonna, we're, that's going to be on the test, and they're going to be like, no, I can go back to the Ed Puzzle and say, Ripley said that Biggie Biggie is homogenous. <laughs> I don't know. It's all the same, right? It's it early the in the same, morning. It has let's, the let's same prefix. Right now, okay, too. it's homozygous, homogenous, all the same words. Homozygous. <laughs> same. It's all the same. Okay. As long as no you've wonder, got the first no couple the letters like right. Last. Oh, you picked a word that starts with the letter H. Close enough. Same word. <laughs> well, here, here's, this, a, here's this is my first time team. teaching genetics. Okay, I've taught science nine much longer than that. <laughs> Here's another H word, but this one is heterozygous, and hetero means different, right? Um, hetero means different, so it's a genotype again. So you got the two letters or the two alleles, the two versions of the um, ear gene here, big E and little e, uh, but they're different. They're not identical alleles. They are different alleles. They'll code for slightly different things, both for ear size, but they code for a big one, a little one. So that is a heterozygous genotype, as opposed to biggie, biggie, or little e, little e, uh, which is homozygous. That's the one. There we go. <laughs> yeah, they both start with a tomato, <laughs> tomato. Okay, on that one, you have to at least get like the second letter just to differentiate. Like if you put something that starts with H-O or H-E, you're good. Um, <laughs> true, there you go. <laughs> Um, Kemeter, oh, I think this sorry. is, I think I this is you. Waiting. I was staring at the screen waiting for like the, the <laughs> slide to change, but it had changed before I started staring. So I was like, what? Uh, that was a magic trick. This is going Only so well. You're a wizard. Um, okay. So um, we've got this idea of a uh, gene, something that codes for a trait. And then we've got alleles, different versions of that same gene making slightly different variations of a protein. Um, and and uh, you've got two copies of them, one from mom, one from dad. The One of the questions that we're gonna be investigating through this unit is how do those two different versions interact with each other to produce the phenotype? So how does the genotype, the combination of alleles, um, result in the phenotype, the physical trait that um, uh, they code for? And the first, uh, interaction, method of interaction we're going to take a look at here is dominant and recessive. And uh, they're named so because dominant would dominate if we were to put the two into a, like a ring and they were, they were going to, uh, I don't know, do boxing or wrestling or something like that. The dominant allele wins is the way to think about it. Recessive allele um, loses in a manner of speaking. Um, it, when we have a trait like, uh, what do we have here as an example? Uh, big E, big E, or, or sorry, E, big E is for um, big ears, little E for little ears. If you had a big E version of the allele and a little E version, so you're heterozygous, um, the big E version is the one that, that we see. That's the phenotype that we're going to see. So you would have big ears. Uh, the recessive, in order to see the recessive trait, you would need two versions of the recessive allele. So you'd have to be homozygous, having two of the same, and recessive, so two little e's. If you have two little e's, then you're going to wind up with small ears. So um, the, the interaction depends on whether the alleles or a particular allele is dominant or recessive, and then which versions. Do you have one copy of, of the uh, recessive? Do you have two copies of the recessive in order to see that trait um, in an individual? And that Mr. was Conley. <laughs> oh my goodness. It says sex on that slide. What are what, <laughs> did you take that off the screen? That's inappropriate. That that's, that's a big part of genetics, man. It's how you pass it on from parents to offspring, parents to offspring. I, I think I think we might part. be uh it, we we had this discussion, my daughter Audrey. I just I I could not um um allow her to go to a symphony. 
I think that that's a little too inappropriate for for children, especially young children, because of all the sax and violins. You've been a dad for what, how many months? And you're already doing worse dad jokes than I am. Hey, hey, I, I've started <laughs> compiling a database of, of dad jokes. <laughs> well, uh, that is it for our, our vocab preload for the unit. Um, join me on the next video when we talk about uh, Gregor Mendel um, and how sex plays a role in genetics and starting to take a look at the patterns uh, that cause them.